It had been five years since Adrian had stolen one of his father's ships and set off into the never-ending ocean blue. Being out at sea was like a second nature to him. After all, his father owned one of the largest ship manufacturing companies in the world and was probably one of the wealthiest in the land. Despite his lavish upbringing, Adrian felt trapped, his father treating him more like an employee than a son. That, combined with his father's unscrupulous business dealings, left Adrian feeling demoralized more often than not. So one night, he decided that enough was enough and with his best friend Nino committed his first act of defiance. Even after those five years, he never tired of hearing the sounds of the water as he woke every morning. The gentle whooshing of the currents and the constant splashing of water against the ship's body tempted him to go back to sleep. But the commotion on the deck just above him told him that it was time to wake. His crew sounded more energetic than usual as they stomped around. He could hear some shouting, but his sleepy mind still took a while to grasp the situation. What in the world? He heard a bewildered voice of one of his men. Adrian pulled himself up and stretched his limbs out, hearing the popping of his joints as he did so. Sleepily slipping on his boots and lacing them up, he heard more shouts from above. He stood and rubbed his eyes before grabbing his gloves that were laid on his nightstand. Captain, come quickly! He heard Nino's voice calling for him. For a brief moment, he wondered if they were being attacked, but decided that the scrambling above wasn't quite loud enough. Plus, he'd hear Alex shouting about loading the guns. The lack of a trigger-happy Alex meant the lack of an attack. What is it so early in the morning? Adrian mumbled as he dragged himself over to the table and fetched the jacket draped over the back of the chair. He put out the oil lamp that was still burning inside. He checked his watch, finding that he had only gotten two hours of sleep, his time spent researching about the bourgeois family. They were one of his father's biggest partners, and it looked like they took part in a lot of shady dealings as well. Where is my hat? He thought in annoyance as his eyes searched his room. Captain! Nino called again. I'm coming, I'm coming, Adrian replied, foregoing his hat and climbing up the stairs to the deck above. Look at what's caught in the net! He heard more voices. He was amused by the excitement of his crew. It seemed that they had caught something interesting. He wondered what it could be that had gotten them so riled up. Perhaps it was the dead body of someone infamous, though they had fished up a fair share of those, so it was nothing new. As he reached the brisk open air, he began pulling on his jacket and walked towards the rear of the ship, where the net was attached to the boom. A good amount of the crew was huddled around the structure. They began to clear as they saw him approach. What could it possibly be that you're all... The rest of his words died on his tongue as he peered at the sight before him. His eyes widened in awe, surprise, and shock, his hand tightening on the lapel of his coat that he hadn't even finished putting on. She was definitely not a dead body. The intense glare that she sent his way told him so. Adrian gulped as his eyes wandered over her body, taking in the sight of the gleaming ruby scales and fluttering tail that struggled to get out of the net. After the initial shock of the tail, he studied her face. Her hair was as deep as the night, a blue hue glinting in the sunlight, and her eyes were brighter and bluer than any ocean he'd ever seen. They bore into his with a mixture of fear and anger, and it made the hairs on the back of his neck stand. Before him was a fabled mermaid in the flesh. What should we do with her, Captain? One of the riggers asked. There is no question about that. Let her go. A woman's voice cut through the commotion. Adrian looked to his right to see Alia, his sailing master, approaching. She rested her hand on her cocked hip and looked unamused by the majority of the crew ogling the mermaid. What? That's such a waste! I bet she'd fetch a pretty price, Kim, one of the maids, said. Are you kidding? Mermaids are an ill omen. We'll be shipwrecked if we let her on, Max, another mate, interjected. Adrian sighed as his crew argued and he turned his attention back to the mermaid in the net. Kim was right. She was beautiful and would probably sell for a tremendous amount, but to do that meant to condemn her to a life of captivity. Ali's right. We let her go. His voice was loud enough to drown out the bickering among the seafarers. Kim wanted to argue, but Adrian's gaze silenced him. We're not those kinds of pirates. I think we all understand what it's like not to have freedom, he explained. They all became silent in agreement. Adrian was often unsure of how he felt about being called a pirate. The term had such a negative connotation, referring to the dastardly criminals that pillaged, plundered, and murdered for the sake of fulfilling their own greed. 
But that wasn't what he and his crew set out to do. Each and every one of his crew members had their lives exploited and ruined by rich nobles, be it the aggressors or the bourgeois. Yes, they raided and plundered, but only ships belonging to the mentioned families. The goal was not only to return some of the wealth to the poorer people, but to intervene with the illegal drug and slave trade that he found out his father was a part of. He turned his gaze back to the mermaid. Capturing her would be against everything they stood for. His hand went to his side for his sword, but realized that he had forgotten it in his quarters. Adrian ordered a cabin boy to fetch it for him, and the child went off eagerly. The boy returned quickly, and Adrian took the cutlass from him, ruffling the boy's hair affectionately. He was one of the constant reminders to Adrian that he had to continue doing what he was doing. The boy had been found with several other children in the last ship they raided. They returned the children to their families, but this one particular lad was an orphan. He had nowhere to go, so Adrian welcomed him with open arms. Life on the ship was going to be dangerous, but he wouldn't have much of a chance on his own either. Alright, back to work all of you, Alia clapped her hands and announced, scattering the sailors. Adrian smiled gratefully at the redhead. He was happy that Nino convinced him to let his sweetheart come along when they first left. She proved to be an invaluable asset to the crew, capable of mapping out charts of the waters with great accuracy. She nodded towards him before heading off to do her own job. I'm gonna stand by just in case you fall, Nino remarked with a smirk. Wouldn't you like to see that? Adrian laughed heartily. He looked up to the boom that was slightly higher than his head. It would be easier to bring it over the deck and cut the net to release her, but he was unsure if she understood him and didn't want her to think that he was trying to bring her on board. He also didn't want to risk having her on the ship if mermaids were indeed an ill omen. So his only choice was to climb to the end of the boom and cut the net while it was over the water. Knowing that the boom was secured in place, he jumped up and grabbed it, pulling himself up onto the pole. He had more than enough experience working with the riggings on a ship that walking along the boom was something he could do in his sleep. As he reached the end, he peered down to see the mermaid looking up at him curiously. I'm sorry about this, you were probably scared, he smiled. Whether she understood or not, he wanted to apologize anyway. Just as he was about to hang himself from the boom and cut the net off, he noticed her wriggling her tail uncomfortably. Is your tail stuck? he asked. She looked at him hesitantly, and just as he was about to assume that she didn't understand, she nodded. Adrian's brows knitted in frustration, concerned that cutting the net off would only result in her getting even more tangled up. Peeling his jacket off, he turned to Nino. Understanding his captain, Nino walked closer towards the rail and held his arms out to catch the jacket. It's so like you to worry about your clothes, Nino quipped and Adrian shot him an annoyed look. It was just cleaned. Rose wouldn't appreciate it if I got it dirty again so soon, Adrian yelled back before climbing down onto the net. The mermaid was startled by the sudden movement and let out a gasp. Sorry about the jostling. I hope it's not hurting you, Adrian looked down sheepishly. The mermaid shook her head. With her confirmation, he descended the net, stopping right by where her body rested. I'll get you out soon, Adrian said before using his sword to carefully saw at the rope surrounding her tail. Thank you. Adrian was surprised to hear the soft murmur of her voice, and he stopped what he was doing to look at her. She was gazing at him shyly, cheeks tinged pink. The fully risen sun made her eyes glow even brighter than before. The pools of brilliant blue seemed to reflect both the sky and the ocean, and he thought that he wouldn't mind getting lost in them forever. She was infinitely more beautiful up close, and they spent a good moment just staring at each other. He was sure that the heat on his cheeks wasn't from the sun. <clears throat> Nino cleared his throat loudly, and Adrian immediately went back to his task of cutting the net. He could hear his friend chuckling and frowned in annoyance. Soon enough, her tail was freed, and she slipped out of the net into the cold waters below, making a loud splash. She surfaced and looked at him briefly before diving back down and swimming away from the ship. Nino whistled as Adrian made it back onto the deck, and Adrian playfully slapped him on the arm. He retrieved his jacket and put it back on before heading back towards the main deck. Nino followed behind him jovially. Guess what, everyone? Nino spoke loudly and clearly for everyone around them to hear. They all turned their heads to see their captain jabbing Nino in the ribs. The latter just laughed and skipped away. It seems a certain pretty fish has caught our captain's eye. There were several groans among the crew, much to Adrian's confusion. 
I was sure he was into dudes, he heard from one direction. I just assumed he was asexual, came from another. Adrian's face burned a deep scarlet as he realized that his crew had been placing bets on his love life. Well, it was true that he rarely partook in the pleasures of romantic encounters, it didn't mean that he was opposed to it. He suddenly recalled all the moments when some of his men would try to get him to enter a brothel, realizing that it was probably all part of their game. He pinched the bridge of his nose and groaned, feeling a headache coming on. You're all unbelievable. He was much too tired to deal with their shenanigans. I'm heading back to sleep, he muttered and waved as he walked away from his crew. Before heading back down into his cabin, he peered out towards the endless blue horizon. May we meet again.